my guest is Dina Senegal, and I am stealing her Death by Chocolate recipe, which has been pleasing me and lots of our friends for many, many years. This is one show that you are happy to be watching or attending. The recipe is incredible, and we are going to learn it right now. Are you ready, Dina? Yes. Come on up. So I start my show by getting to know our guest a little bit better. Um, Dina and I have known each other for many, many years. We played field hockey together, just like Amanda and I did, and Ellen and I did. Um, we've grown up together um, since elementary school, and um, I've had the pleasure of indulging in her death by chocolate since probably 2000, I'd say. Maybe I had the first bite of deliciousness. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dina, um, you have been in the jewelry industry and in the family business for a lot of years. You want to tell us a little bit about that? Yep, it's family business. Um, it's, right now, it's my mom, my sister, my husband. And we've been in Manchester since 1987, I think, wow. right? 82, 82, 1982. <laughs> and um, yeah, so it's a great, it's a great place to um, have a business and raise a family. That's so. great, yeah. And do you, is it fun working with your family? Is, are there it ups is. and downs or is it, it every is. day just great? No, it's, it's fun. That's, it's fun. That's awesome. <laughs> Not a lot of people can say that, I'm sure. Yeah. They're um, all here today. They keep, they're here to support me, so it's good. <laughs> <laughs> After hours. <laughs> right. um, so, let's see. Um, you live in Danby, right? Yes. And um, you have a garden, and you have a lot of animals. Yeah. Uh, you have two children. Two children, yeah. Yeah. Uh, my son, Duncan, played baseball with your son, Ethan. Both kick some butt in the All-Stars. Excited. <laughs> And Rachel is in high school, getting more beautiful and taller every day. <laughs> uh, tell me about your garden and your animals and, and your life up on the hill in Bambi. Um, it's definitely up on the hill. <laughs> um, the other name for it, we call it Tule Greenlands because the wind just whips and it's just cold all the time. Um, but when summer comes, we want a garden. And um, my garden has been a work in progress for a long time now. Um, first, I had it close to the house where they recommend you put a garden, and then Darren's like, that's the only spot where the slide can go, you know, the children's play set, so we moved my garden. So now it's further away, but every year it's gotten bigger and bigger, and uh, we love it. And Is it it's easy to water, being so far raised away? Raised beds, and no, yeah, the hose goes down there, nice. and we have raised beds, we have blueberries and raspberries and wow. lots of herbs. And what so are you picking good. right now? Do you have something you're harvesting? Yeah, right a lot now? of lettuce, kale, spinach. Mm. Blueberries, raspberries, yum. Yep, herbs, drying them, so it's good. Oh, that's great. Yeah, you dry herbs that's and yep. then you use them all year. Yep, yep. And you have chickens whose eggs you eat. Yeah, right? we're down to two chickens. Oh, because everybody likes chicken. <laughs> 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 so yeah. The foxes go. Mm, it tastes yeah. like chicken. The skunks. <laughs> the the raccoons. Skunks. Oh yeah, everybody likes chicken. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, are they in a pen or are they roaming free? There's like, no such thing as free range chicken. No. Because <laughs> yeah, they're all dead. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, the, these, yeah, it's sad. Oh. <laughs> but no, we have to get a better pen situation. Mm. But yeah, it's yeah. good though. We get, we get collect two eggs a day. Two eggs a day? Well, yeah. you can't really eat more than that, you know. Oh, if you have, well, no, we eat a lot of eggs. We do. Yeah. We do. Well, so. well, you'll get more, I'm sure, right? Yeah. Um, and when a few years ago you were talking about getting some bees, did that ever happen? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. No, I've had bees and every year they die. <laughs> every year I get more. <laughs> but I'm trying. <laughs> have you ever gotten honey at all? No, but now I've decided that I'm just, I have bees to pollinate my garden. Oh, I don't well, need the honey. Well, I that's just, nice. Yeah, so, so you just, you get them in the spring and they... They help pollinate and, and then whatever then happens, a bear happens gets them in the winter or in the spring or ah. the weather's not quite right. Something always happens. Well, that's the, the, yeah. the tribulations of living in Vermont, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. We do our best. Um, so let's talk a little bit about this death by chocolate, which is so amazing. Mm -hmm. um, we've just learned that you like to eat healthy, you like to eat out of your garden. Um, it's very important to you and your family that you have a wholesome diet. Um, the first time that I had Death by Chocolate, it was delicious. 
But tell me a little bit about that recipe. The recipe's evolved. <laughs> <laughs> um, the recipe originally came, my mom got it from one of her oldest bridge friends. And um, she gave it to us. And my sister is the one that actually started making it. And she would bring it to different places, and everybody loved it. And um, so then I started making it. And it was really easy. It was like cake mix out of a box, mousse out of a box, um, Cool Whip. <laughs> you read the package, and it's just <laughs> laden with chemicals and yeah. preservatives, and really not good for you. So then a few years ago, um, we decided to change our diet, and we were trying to eat as healthy as possible. So the kids wanted death by chocolate, and I was like, well, I have to kind of make this better now that I'm making them you know, eat healthy. I right. have to make sure I make my death by chocolate as healthy <laughs> as I can. So I um, made my own cake <laughs> from scratch, <laughs> and then my own chocolate mousse from scratch, and then my own cool whip, or not cool whip, but um, whipped cream yeah. from scratch, and it's a lot better. It's of chemicals. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're going to eat healthy, you might as well do it as, if you're going to eat, I guess, have a treat, it might as well be as healthy as, as it possibly right. can. And you use dark chocolate, right? Yeah. Right? Yep. As much Yes, you get the cocoa, antioxidants, cocoa. right? Cocoa. What do they call it? Do they say cocoa? cocoa. They don't say, when it, they spell it, it sounds like cocoa. It looks like cocoa. I think maybe the bean is the cocoa bean, okay. and the cocoa is the the powder or the chocolate that they make. But you know, I'm just making that up. It sounds good, right? <laughs> Cocoa is the bean, and cocoa is the, the actual usable chocolate. chocolate. But the higher the content, the better. Yes. Right. Yeah, because there is antioxidants and stuff in there, I guess. Right. They say it's good for women to have a little chocolate every day. So you should just have a little death by chocolate sure. every day. <laughs> well, we shouldn't call it death by chocolate anymore then. No, right. We should call it like live by chocolate. Sure, right. <laughs> That's, That's what we're making today. Yay. Live by chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, the first time that I ever had it, you brought it to my house to a potluck. And I, I believe it was um, when we first built our house. Duncan, you were in my belly. <laughs> and I wanted a lot of death by chocolate. Um, and it didn't get finished, but the the rest of it was in the refrigerator. And, and what happened? What did you hear the next? <laughs> well, I saw Jeff, um, I don't know, months later. And he was like, oh my God, that was incredible. I stood in the refrigerator and ate it. <laughs> and um, so then the next time you had a potluck or whatever, yeah. you invited Jeff. Insisted. I was like, I'll, I'll make it for, for Jeff. <laughs> yeah. And um, so I did. So you had a couple of times. Yeah, and with the bad recipe. With the bad recipe, yeah. yeah. So. so uh, don't tell Daddy he had death by chocolate, but we're having live, live by, by chocolate. chocolate. <laughs> That's perfect. I love that. <laughs> That's great. So uh, would you like to show us all how to make that now? Yeah. All right. Let's all right. go. Okay. Okay, Dina. Here we are, ready to learn how to make live by chocolate. <laughs> um, as, as we build the dish, there are many layers to this dish. Dina, why don't you tell us about all the different layers? Yep, so there's, there's really only five ingredients, or five layers, mm -hmm. right? So we have, um, we make homemade whipped cream, and then we do a layer of that, and then next is um, we cut our cake into thirds, and we do a chocolate cake layer, then we add a little Kahlua, some Heath bar, and then a um, layer of chocolate mousse, and then we keep on building up until it's to the top. And usually what I'll do is I'll only go this far if I'm going to a potluck, or else you have a mess. Or if I'm staying home, then I'll fill it up and kind of make it big. You add a little bit of heat bar on top. Nice. Yeah. Um, so in the old days, it was easy to just throw this thing together. Yeah. But now it's actually um, a, an entire one or two day process. <laughs> yeah, <it is. laughs> so Dina said she likes to make the chocolate mousse ahead of time. Obviously, you should make the cake very much ahead of time so it has time to cool. So the chocolate mousse in the cake, you can make the day before. Yeah. Um, most everyone has a, a good chocolate cake recipe that would work for this. Um, Dina, you like the chocolate cake recipe off of the... The King Arthur flower box. That, that was the first, cho well, that was like the second cake I made from scratch. And 
it came out okay. <laughs> First <laughs> one. sticking with that one. Yeah, I, am. <laughs> I, I like the um, Hellman's mayonnaise chocolate cake recipe, which mm -hmm. has little mayonnaise in it, and it's very moist and. Um, it's kind of a no-fail thing too. The, yeah. I, the first time I ever made that was for Tanya Walker's birthday oh. party <laughs> when I lived in Richmond, Virginia, and uh, everybody loved it. So I just kept doing, doing that, that one. one. Yep. Um, and um, probably the the most intimidating part of of the death live by chocolate <coughs> is the chocolate mousse. So we're going to make the chocolate mousse right now and show you how easy it is to make chocolate mousse. <coughs> so. Um, Dina, you started with? Yep, you start with um, four eggs and you, um, you separate the egg from the yolk. So you use, um, you put the four egg whites away, put them in an omelet for the next morning, and you have um, your four egg yolks. Then you um, take uh, sugar, four t uh, two tablespoons of sugar, and heavy cream, two okay. cups. Three quarters. Oh, three quarters of a cup, right. And um, Amy taught me something. I learned a lot from this whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to call her up every time <laughs> I have her. I'm making some. Amy, is am I doing this right? <laughs> so um, she says you don't put the, the sugar right on top of the egg yolks or else they kind of burn. They yes. make like a chemical reaction and it burns. Does so. anybody know that? <laughs> no, I didn't know that either. Um, so I thought that was kind of cool. So you do that and you um, s stir it all together. Um, and make kind of a custard, custard, right? And then you let it cool. Yep, so here it's, it's a little can, thick because we let it sit because we didn't want to bore you with stirring custard for five minutes. So here we have it done. Um, and it should coat the back of a spoon. And the way I find Obviously, this coats the back of a spoon, but as you're over low heat and you're stirring it, the easiest way to tell is if you do this and it leaves a mark and it doesn't run back together. And then you can <laughs> taste it. Oh, my God, that's good. That's really good. Okay. <laughs> no. um, and then, and then um, we melted eight ounces of chocolate with a teaspoon of vanilla, vanilla. right? Yeah. And, um, and Amy uses her... Um, this is her favorite Madagascar vanilla. Mm -hmm. And yeah. tell them how you. I um, I make my own vanilla, <laughs> and I use um, a little glass jar, and I stick vanilla beans in it, and then every time the vodka is almost gone, <laughs> I stick more vodka in, and then it keeps on building up, <laughs> and I have vanilla all the time. So it's just <laughs> vanilla beans and, and vodka yeah. that steeps in a little jar. Right. Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah. That's great. But she, hers has this beautiful um like warm aroma afterwards. Mm, yeah, I love that. Yeah. I love that vanilla. Mm. All right, so we're going to mix this into that. Stir it up so it doesn't cook the eggs. Um, another tip, when you're melting chocolate, um, chocolate will seize up if water gets into it. So you always, when you're melting chocolate, you want to make sure that um, you don't get any water in it. If you're using this double boiler if for some reason, you put the spoon in there and then put it in the chocolate, then you're gonna have a hard time with it. It'll just seize up and be impossible to mix or smooth out. Interesting. Liquor, vanilla, alcohol will not seize up chocolate, but water will just okay. make it impossible to work with. That looks good. All right, great. So we've got that. You got a good shot of that, Elliot? There we go. Thank you. You're welcome. It's a tall pot. It's tough. So here we have this beautiful smooth mixture. And what we do with that is, this burner hasn't been on so it's all right, um, we're going to strain this. And um, Dina has a little funny story about straining this. <laughs> so funny. it was... <laughs> In the olden days when you made death by chocolate, it used the package, um, mousse package, and it was laden with awfulness. Um, and it was easy though, right? It took nothing. So I had to go and research, okay, I needed a chocolate mousse recipe, you know? So you Google chocolate mousse recipe and I found one uh, that has, um, that uses, um, kind of cooks egg, eggs a little bit. And um, so, 
I found that one. And in the recipe, it says strain the chocolate mousse and strain it. So I put it in a strainer like this and I strained it. And it says chill. So I put it in the refrigerator. So then I went to Amy's house. And we were, you know, I was telling her the recipe that I use and all that. And she, I said, so you have to strain it and all this stuff comes out. And she's like, no, no, no. That's not why they do that. She was, she was straining it, like putting this in the fridge like this, straining it, like so stuff can but come stuff out. But stuff would come out. <laughs> so you're not supposed to do that. But really why we're straining it, we're pushing it through the strainer because when you cook those eggs and melt the chocolate, there are some solids in there. Um, if but I don't think ours has that much solid in it. No, I think we did we'll a, good a good job. job yeah. We'll see when we push it through. But the... The real incredibleness of mousse is the mouthfeel. It's smooth and silky. So if you had a chunk of unmelted chocolate or a piece of cooked egg in your chocolate mousse, that would just ruin the whole thing. <laughs> You'd be like, I'm in America, I'm not in France. Mm -hmm. So um, what, what they mean in the recipe when they say strain this is push it through a strainer to get all of the, the unwanted solids out. So then what we have in the bottom here um, that we've pushed through is pure, smooth chocolate egg sugar stuff. Voila. All right, beautiful. So, um, we have previously done this. What you want to do is put this in the refrigerator to cool. And how long do you put it in there for? No, one hour. An hour? Yeah. All right. So it cools. Just feels cool. Yeah. Um, you probably don't want to leave it in there a long time because it'll just turn back into hard chocolate. So. See, um, I wouldn't have known that. <laughs> <laughs> so. But this, see, this has been in the fridge for probably an hour. Yeah. And that's decent. It's good shape. So um, Dina's going to add one third of this, the, the one and a quarter cups of cream, heavy cream, whipped with two more tablespoons of sugar. And put one third of it in there and fold it in. That kind of lightens up your chocolate base and it allows you to more easily fold in the rest of the whipped cream. These are all the I went to culinary school yeah. tips that Dina <laughs> didn't know. <laughs> right. So um, there's a reason for everything. She right. just follows the recipe and goes, oh, I guess that's why I'm doing it. Um, and you probably fold a lot better than I do. Well, let's see. <laughs> um, the, the first third, you can be a little bit more violent with it. You know, you really want to get it in there so that it's lightened up. And then, let's see the second third. <laughs> She's a professional. <laughs> and you just want to go underneath and pull it around like that. There you go. I'll let you do the rest. Let me just get that out of there for you. There you go. And that, that's easy. That's, that's all it took. You separate some eggs, you mix them with some sugar, you heat them up on the stove with some cream until they're a little bit thick, add some melted chocolate, chill it, whip some cream with some more sugar, fold it together, <laughs> and you have chocolate mousse. No box. No box. All wholesome oh, ingredients. Nice. And it's delicious. And you can just use this chocolate mousse recipe to make chocolate mousse because it's good stuff. Yeah. I think that's a good job. That's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so now you've seen how easy it is to make chocolate mousse. Um, the, other, the other sections of the Live By Chocolate are ready to go. So we're going to chill the mousse, and we'll be right back, and we'll show you how to assemble mm -hmm. this amazing dessert. So we're back. We've got mm -hmm. all of our elements ready to go, and Dina's going to show us how to build Live By Chocolate. I love the new name. <laughs> um, so what we're going to do is take a l first uh, some whipped cream. And in, in her recipe, she says to use two cups, but we've decided that three cups is better because you... You always have to make extra, yeah. Cause yeah. And it's the top, so you need the top to be nice and creamy. And it is the bottom as well. Yeah. And while she's doing that, um, I found when I made this mess, I'm not very good at it, but when I made this today, I cut, um, one, I cut two cakes each in half. And it seemed like there was too much cake. The cake layers were too big. I didn't get to actually finish what the recipe says. So what I'm doing is I am cutting 
one layer into three. And that makes the cake a little bit thinner. I've already cut one, but if, if you're, you're wanting to know how do I cut a cake that thin, um, what, what I do is um, put my knife here and you just keep your hand where it is, keep your knife where it is, just go back and forth and turn the cake. And I sometimes just tilt the knife down a little bit so that you're sure not to come through the top. There you go. So then Looks you have. Good. All right. So what I'm going to do is the first layer that she cut, I'm going to put it in there. And I usually put the, um, the, what would you say? The top? The perf, it's got holes in it. Whole side up. Oh. <laughs> so <laughs> the that cut absorbs side. All, the cut side up. So that absorbs all the, um, because your next thing is glue is going to go in there. Or you take your fork and you make little holes Now, um, do you want to cut this Yeah, so out? Amy's cakes are 9-inch pans. Mine are usually 8-inch pans, so my trifle bowl is a little bit um, uh, too, small. too small. So with an 8-inch pan, it works. So it depends on your trifle bowl. Yeah. But, um, yeah, you're skilled at that. <laughs> so we cut that a little extra off. Yeah. And today when I cut the extra off, I put it in a bowl with the extra mousse and some whipped cream that I had and put it on the table and it was gone in an instant. <laughs> so don't worry about wasting anything because it's never going to go to waste. And then this is the fun part because you get to go buy Kahlua, you know, you get to you drink white Russians for a month. <laughs> right. <exactly>. <laughs> <laughs> And then you get on the scale and you're like, oh, God, I can't do that again. <laughs> but you just pour a little bit of clue. And it depends on what kind of party you're going to. <laughs> you know, if it's a kid-friendly party, be lighter on the Kahlua. If it's, you know, fun adult party, you can be a little heavier. They give you, an, they give you the amount. There, in the recipe, there's the amount. But I just kind of yeah. depend on where I'm going. Then you take some heat bar. And um, you put that on, you sprinkle that on. Um, this part always scares me. I always think that someone's going to bite into this and be like, oh my god, I just broke my tooth. What is, what, what is in this? You know? But it's Heath Bar crunches. So you put on that. And what we were talking about earlier with the Heath Bar, what do we suggest? We think you should just get Mother Myrick's Butter Crunch. Yes. We could probably cut to the chase here. <laughs> and um, take a little break and have a little TV magic. Whip this thing up so that it looks gorgeous and be right back. Look at these beautiful things we made. No, thank Live you. by chocolate twice. How exciting. I love the new name. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's so much fun. You'll have to come back. We'll make more stuff and give them better names, too, made with better ingredients. Thank Sounds you good. so much. Thank you, studio audience, and thank you, TV Land. We'll see you next time on Life You spilled your glass, you never take the blame. Oh, down your shirt.